Hey friends, August the 21st, uh, Sunday, 11 a.m., 84 degrees. Uh, we've been getting rain. We finally got rain. Somebody finally, the good Lord turned off the oven switch. <laughs> so we've been getting rain. Um, we are gonna go ahead and um, I have for five days a pork belly curing. So we're making homemade bacon. I'll show you how we do that. Uh, we're gonna throw some ribs on the smoker and I'm gonna show you some new developments in the garden. So let's have some fun. Okay guys, so we've got the pork belly. It's been curing for about five days. And I'll put a recipe down below. It's pretty much sugar and salt. I don't really like to use nitrates. A nitrate is a special salt. It's high in nitrate and it's for curing. If you notice when you go to eat the baking, and like if you buy it in the grocery store, it's just very salty. Um, I just don't like that feeling I get either when I eat bacon with nitrates. So I don't really use nitrates, you don't have to. Uh, now, like if you're doing corned beef, you're not going to get that pink color. Doesn't matter to me. It's still cured, cored, uh, corned. It's cured, but just without the nitrate. Uh, also, too, we're going to throw some baby back ribs. Uh, we get good deals at the at the at the store. We go ahead and back pack them up. We pre-season them as well, too. Maybe let me take you down here a little bit closer so you can see the pork. Just want you to see how all that moisture came out of that pork belly. That's what you're doing when you're curing. Is your the salt is pulling out the moisture. Uh, in the meats, not necessarily the fat. So we'll take this to the smoker after we rinse it off thoroughly. Well, we went ahead and pulled the shade cover down. Um, I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I can always put it back up if I need to. Hey, the next 10 days, the forecast is upper 80s, lower 90s, and at least 60% chance of rain. I think we're out of the oven now for a while. However, uh, before I start to plant the fall garden, um, if it does start to see signs of getting hot hundreds for more than two or three days, then I'll put some of it back up. Let's take a look around. Hey, some of the herbs are hanging in there. We lost a lot of the thyme, but I'm gonna replant that. All the different Cuban basils, uh, the regular Italian basil, um, the oregano, um, it's doing pretty good. Uh, the soil and all the beds are just resting. I, I'm deep soaking before the rain. Um, I will till these in. I know I'm, I'm pretty much a, a no dig, but with everything that happened this year, uh, the weather, I, I got to get some air in the soil and that's okay. I'll, I'll feed the microbes with horticultural molasses. This is sweet. Peppers hung in there. They're now starting to bud. Uh, we are getting flowers. Uh, so we'll hopefully start production here again when we get some rain. Um, we went ahead and replanted a, buffer, bu a bumper crop, I call it. So like the late summer to fall crops, we've got some Kentucky Wonder Beans, we've got some pickling cucumbers, and then over here by the, uh, by the arch, we've got some uh, Asian long beans, asparagus beans. It's just neat to see how some of this basil still survived. Um, peppers in the plants, in the pots too. Little strawberries, um, cherry tomato, sorry is uh, blooming. The Hugo Culture Garden is doing good. Uh, we are starting to get some winter squashes coming up now. So that'll be nice when the rains come. Well, first year to ever do the goji berries. Look at all the berries on this. We've been coming out here and picking them off and eating them. They're really tasty. They're not too sweet. They've got beautiful flowers. So here in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna start dotting them in all over the, the yard. Very healthy. I think with the weather now, we can, we can put them in the ground, no problem. I don't think anything's going to happen to them. Uh, but no thanks to Danny and Wanda at Deep South Homestead. As we saw your video, we're inspired. We bought that book. This is going to be a great addition uh, to the permaculture. We're going to be starting seeds here probably this week. 30 gallon potatoes, we're going to try to harvest. Of course, we didn't have any luck with our five gallon buckets, but that's okay. Uh, the sweet potatoes are doing really well. The Japanese purple uh, and your standard ones. Um, I have not seen any flowers. I'm not worried about it. Um, 
but the vines, the green foliage is just amazing. It's wrapping all around here. I am gonna go ahead and extend this, probably this winter, so it'll have something higher to crawl upon and climb on. So we are getting excited about planting the fall garden. Gonna probably wait a few more weeks. Um, I gotta get the soil under, under condition, get it ready. I might be adding some black cow, cow manure to amend the soil, and I'm gonna till it up. I've gotta get some oxygen in it. I know it's not, it's not good for the microbes down deep, but like I said, I'll feed with horticultural molasses. I'll get everything going with compost. I just need to get some air into the soil. It's pretty compacted. Uh, but yeah, we'll hang out and show you some other projects we got going on, um, and we'll put that bacon on the grill. All right, guys, we're gonna put the, the bacon on all the far back, fat side down, and then we'll flip it later. And then we're gonna throw these ribs on. Now, when we marinate these before we backpack them, we do not marinate with salt because that'll draw the moisture out. Just salt it right when it goes on. There we go. Okay, friends, it's been a couple hours. Go ahead and take a look and see. Nice, we don't want the temperature over 200. So what I have right here is a bottle with vinegar and olive oil uh, seasoned. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start basting these ribs and that's gonna keep it moist. So we've got probably another three, four more hours on both the ribs and the bacon, but it's looking good. Hey friends, we are back. I had that smoker going all day yesterday. Today is Monday. I figured I would continue the video today. We're gonna take the bacon. We'll take a look at it right there, how beautiful that is. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slice it. We've got a little slicer here, it works just fine. Um, and then we're gonna vac pack it. Here we go. All right, we've got the slicer all set. And this is kind of loud, so I'll probably just play some music. I always like to rotate the bacon just so it slices evenly and we do it pretty pretty thick but I can go thinner We're making some good progress here. We've got a full sheet. I've got some a little thicker than others. Hey guys, nothing better than making homemade bacon. Now all these little tiny pieces, we're gonna just dice them up. We'll back pack them. Um, we're gonna continue to slice this as well too. Um, but we'll dice it up, back pack, and we'll use it for like beans or anything else we wanna do. Hey guys, I've used a lot of backpack machines over the years. Um, I've done a lot of research. We just recently got this Nesco uh, VS57. Let me verify that for you guys. This is amazing. Yep, the VS12, VS12 model. Uh, I'll bring you down here closer when we backpack, but this really does a good job and it's a pretty decently priced as well too. So we're gonna get all these, uh, all this bacon backpacked and manageable portions. Um, we're going to label everything and then we'll take it to the freezer.
Got to get it in there just right. Come on. There we go. It's a really good seal. It's got your countdown right here. And there's all different kinds of settings too. There's a setting for marinades. There's one for extra duty suction. But look, it comes out really good. I'm really impressed with the Nesco. Whew, we got that done. <laughs> that was a lot of work, but worth it. So check this out. So we've got 16 packs of sliced bacon, about eight to 10 pieces in each pack. And we've got one diced. I could use that for beans or something, but check this out, guys. That is a lot of bacon with a half a pork belly. Um, price of the pork belly, anywhere from 16 to 19 bucks total for the half belly. Um, salt, sugar, I'll put the recipe down below. You could play with it a little bit if you want less salt, but you can. Um, you can even, um, after you cure it, you can even brush some maple syrup on it and do maple bacon. Uh, I have, as well in the past, done peppered bacon. So after the cure comes out, just put some coarse salt on it and then take it to the smoker. So, hey, thanks for joining me, guys. It is raining outside. Um, well, we're probably going to be plant starting our seeds for our fall garden uh, here this coming weekend. So, hey, thanks for watching. God bless. We'll see y'all soon.